Hi there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and in this video we are going to talk about how to correct wobbly lines in a panorama as quickly as possible. Now in this photo there is no architecture, this is just the outdoors. But I ran into a problem that was really interesting that I thought I would share with you because there is a reflection here. That is what gave me so much trouble. This vertical line, not many people might not think, people might not think about this. This vertical line needs to perfectly align and this one here and everything in all of these reflections. Every now and then I see other folks uh, posting photos of reflections and the reflection has a slant to it. Well, unless your water is slanted, a reflection should be perfectly straight up and down. So that is what we're going to do today. And it's actually very, very simple. But first, let's talk about how we shot these images, because this is, in fact, a how we shot it video. Let me hit L here to go out of this uh, little light box kind of view here. And you can see that this says 15 seconds at F2.0 and ISO 1600 on a Nikon D750 with a Sigma 35 millimeter art. This was not the original image though, this was a panorama. Here's the original frames. They were like this. And you can see I've got a bit of a crazy slant going on here. These ones are leaning to the right and these ones are leaning to the left way too much. It was the middle of the night and I could not see, so please don't hold it against me. I don't use nodal equipment or leveling whatever uh, when I'm creating a panorama. I just use an L bracket on my ball head tripod and I just swing from left to right. And usually I can do a bit, bit of a better job than this, but uh, like I said, it was 2 a.m. and I was really sleepy and it was pitch dark. So how to correct something that winds up looking like this. You can see it's like a, an arc, an arch here. It's really, really bad. So how do you correct that? First, let's create the panorama though. What I've got here is all of these 15 second images at 15 seconds f2 ISO 1600. The reason I chose those camera settings, by the way, is because if my shutter speed got too long, the stars would start to move in the sky because of the Earth's rotation. If you're on a 30 millimeter lens or so, you want to keep your shutter speed to half of that. So 15 seconds is perfect or even less. I could have gone to 1.4 and 8 seconds because this is such a sharp, nice lens, but since I'm making a panorama, I wanted f2 to reduce vignetting. Or then again, I could have done f2 and ISO 3200 and 8 seconds. But anyways, I've got the stars here looking pretty darn dot-ish. They're, 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 they're a little bit moving, but not too much. So that's why I chose these camera settings. Anyways, if you have other questions about nightscape photography, there's we have a few other videos on that on those subjects, how to focus at night on the stars and that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and create this panorama. I'm just going to shift click on all of these photos and go to Photo Merge Panorama. This is a Lightroom CC, the Creative Cloud version of Lightroom. It has a very, very amazing panorama and HDR feature. And if you'll notice, I didn't even bother messing with those photos. Some of them were black and white and some of them were still color. That's because this panoramic tool now creates a DNG file that retains all of the properties of your original NEF or CR2 or whatever raw files. I'll, I'll go back to I'll go back and be able to adjust my white balance as if it was a raw file, all of that stuff. Let's uh, hurry this up and get this panorama going though. And here we are in Lightroom's panorama merge preview feature function. I usually use cylindrical or spherical because perspective goes absolutely nuts with the edge photos and really stretches them out or it just says, sorry, can't do it at all. So let's go with cylindrical or spherical. Actually, to save time, we've already done this once, so let's just go back to the DNG file. I'm gonna click cancel. I've got the DNG file here ready to go. And as you can see, if I hit D for develop to go over to the develop module, I've got the raw processing right here still at my fingertips. The white balance and everything is going to be editable as if this was a raw NEF file. And let's hit reset just because I want to process this really quick. And let's go, what do we really want to do? I've got the Linengersa SLR Lounge presets here. I'm just going to go for HDR Vivid Color. Let's go straight for broke. 
Let's go for broke. And you know what I do? Oh, wow, that looks great right out of the box. But I've got a problem here. For some reason, my tint was bumped. I find that daylight works well or flash works well for processing photos by the light of the moon after you just bump your white balance down to about 5,000. That looks great, 4,900. Maybe I need to add back in a little bit of my tint. Let's go maybe to plus five, and I think that's gonna be perfect. The only other thing I want to do, because this is still an unfinished file, I don't want this to be the final editing. I'm going to dial the contrast down so that I'm not cutting or clipping anything. Eh, let's go to plus 30, plus 40, and then I'll just bump the contrast up later. So I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna hit command or control E to bring this DNG file into Photoshop. And here we go. This is what you all have been waiting for. We're going to correct this and I'm going to say we'll get it done in three or four minutes tops. It's really, really an easy process. Actually, you could probably spend five or ten minutes if you really, really, you know, if this was going to hang in a gallery. But for the purpose of instruction, it's actually a very, very simple process that I can demonstrate in uh, three or four minutes. So let's time myself here. Uh, we've got this image here in with the crazy bowing going on. Wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. It's just, it's really, really bad. So here's what we do. Edit Puppet Warp. This is going to bring up an interface. Now, if you've got this, if you, you might be accustomed to seeing this, it says show mesh, this option here. I usually leave that off. And what I'm going to use is instead the command or control apostrophe to show a vertical and horizontal grid. That way, you'll see in a second, let's drop some pins on this point here and this point here because those should match up vertically. Let's drop another point here on this point and then here on that point. That's it. I'm just gonna create a box and then I'm going to hit command apostrophe and drag these points around until they are perfectly lined up. Now let's go down the line and look at this. Where's that line? Where's that line? Yes, it is almost perfect right here at this point. And let's just keep that perfectly aligned. Yes, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is line up this one. I'm gonna drag this to a line here and then follow it down and say, okay, I need to go over three notches and we are good, right? Did I get that right? It's hard to look with these lines so close, but I like having the lines close so that I can do view, snap, and have all the snapping turned on. And that way it makes it really, really quick to just snap to lines and have these go perfectly vertical. The next thing is I got to look at this horizontal uh, wobbliness here. And to correct that, I could do something like this, where I go way over here and then bump this up, but I'm actually not gonna keep much of this edge over here or over here because it just starts to get boring as a panorama. I know already that I want this to be a two to three aspect ratio image. So I'm not going to worry too much about this. I'm just going to look at this line right as it goes through here. And instead of trying to drop a pin here and here and wobble this, here I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna take this one bump it up one, and then I'm gonna take this one and bump it up one, and then I'm going to maybe do one bump way over here, and that's about it. This is starting to look pretty darn perfect. What you can do is you can count how far off each of these things is. This is one, two, three, four notches off, and this is only one, two notches off. See, that helps me know that I gotta go up one more and up one more and maybe up one or maybe two more over here. And now, see, it magically looks perfectly, perfectly, perfectly flat here and uh, horizontally and vertically. I could check a few of the other reflection points right here, right here, yeah, that looks good. This rock, yeah, that looks good. And boom, I am done. It only took a few minutes. Just as a sanity check, I'm gonna hit command apostrophe. Oh, I don't, yeah, well, hold on, let's do that. Apply the puppet warp, I guess we're gonna go ahead and do that. That looks amazing. It looks perfectly horizontal. Because this is wobbling off the edge here, it's a, a bit of an optical illusion. But if you zoom in here and just view it like this, 
you're going to see that it looks a little bit better. I might, I, maybe I should have bumped this up just a tiny bit, but you get the general idea. This was a very quick edit, and it was very, very precise using the grid to puppet warp and snap things into place. So there you have it, folks. This vertical, this image is ready to go back into Lightroom and be turned into both the black and white and the color versions in Lightroom. Personally, my favorite is the black and white. And that's it, folks. If you have any questions about nightscape photography, uh, how to get these types of photos, or panorama photography and how to solve weird wobbly problems like this, please feel free to comment in written form. I would love to help you troubleshoot your weird panorama problems. Like I said, I'm kind of the uh, guy who doesn't use super expensive nodal equipment. I like to do it this kind of quick and dirty way, especially when I'm backpacking and every ounce, every pound on my back matters. So I'll look forward to hearing your comments and maybe helping you out. Until next time, take care.